open us up in a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's once again, Lord, that we humbly bow before you and say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for all your many blessings, Lord. We thank you, God, for last night's rest. And we thank you, God, for waking us up this morning with a mind stayed on you, God. We're yes. just so eternally grateful, Lord Father God, for your word. Uh, your word that directs our path and a light to our feet, Lord Father yes. God. We thank you, God, and that you allow us to hide your word deep down in our hearts so that we might not sin against you, God. We ask, God, that you allow us to sit with our ten words spoken, Lord Father God, as the man of God breaks the bread of life before us, Lord Father God. And allow us not only to be hearers, but be doers of this word. We ask, God, that you search our hearts on today, Lord, and forgive us for anything that we've done, said, or thought that's not like you, God, as we forgive those who have done, said, and thought things against yes. us, Lord. Father, we love you. We adore you, Lord, Father God. We lift your name on high, Lord, and we ask these blessings and all other blessings under the authority and power given unto us by Christ Jesus. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 And amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Weston. And again, for those of you who were not able to participate last, well, we didn't have it last Tuesday, Tuesday before last, Pastor Weston has been elected to be the pastor of United Cornerstone Baptist Church in the Ferris city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We're so excited for him in this new, this new position. Amen. He's been a pastor uh, for about a year. Amen. And now the, the people of God, amen, made the right decision to give, uh, to give themselves, receive a blessing that God has given them. So we're proud of him. We thank God for him. And we know that God has greater work for him to do uh, at United Cornerstone. Everybody is coming in. This is Sister Cheryl Mass, Sister Doris Tita, Doris Tita, looking just like my bread. Glad to see you here tonight. Amen. Sister Brenda Hooks, Sister Nigeria Ravenel. So good to have you all here. Pastor Wood and I are here. We got Pastor Weston, who's, who when he's, when he's led to will, will join us. We're going to be teaching tonight about the promise of rest. The promise of rest. You know, there, there is the promise of rest, Pastor Woods, and sometimes we get it confused with the sabbatical, sab sab sabbatical rest, you know. God created the world in six days, and the Bible said he rested on the seventh day. And sometimes it becomes confusing because we look at the Pharisaic route, and the Pharisaic route is no, you don't suppose to work. You don't suppose to do nothing on, on the Sabbath day. And Jesus declared as he was picking corn uh, with his disciples because they were hungry, and they got ridiculed by the scribes and Pharisees. He said that the Sabbath... Uh, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. But we're getting ready to go a little deep into this because there is a rest of there is a rest of God. There's a rest for the people of God, and it's it's God desire that we enter into the rest, His rest, the rest that He He gave. He actually is not. It's new to us, but he gave the children of Israel an opportunity to enter into his rest, and they did not. They fell from re entering in. Of, they fell short of the rest of God. And so on last week, week, uh, week before last, we concluded on the promise of peace, and we're getting ready to go into the rest. And it's, and it's our desire uh, that you understand this word tonight because it will make a difference in how you how you journey this is not a race we're not in a foot race when we are in a, on a journey it's a lifelong journey and it's in god's desire that jeremiah 29 that our way is peace his desire his thoughts for us is peace and not evil and to bring us to a bright future and expect an end we will have trouble and we will have suffering but the suffering shouldn't be because of Christ, not because of bad choices. Sometimes we suffer and we think that the devil is busy and he is always busy and will always be busy until Christ return. However, sometimes we make bad decisions and it ends up creating problems. But we also understand that the devil is an enemy 
His desire is to kill, steal, and destroy. So how do we journey and have peace? And how do we have tranquility? God has an answer. And that is that we enter into his rest. So, so our Heavenly Father desires that we find rest. The rest of God is not relaxing and sleeping. You know, people say, I need rest. And when they see rest in the Bible, unless you go deep into the word of God, you can conclude that rest is the day we don't do anything. We rest and we sleep and we get our body restored. And that is a rest. That's a sabbatical rest where we should rest from our labor. But the resting of God, uh, he wants us to have rest. Genesis says God rests on the seventh day. This does not mean he was tired or he needed to refresh himself. The rest, when God rested, Pastor Wood, on the seventh day, is not because he was tired. He's not giving us an example of you got to take a day to refresh yourself or take a day to uh, uh, because you're tired. Because God don't get tired. God, 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 God does not get tired at all. God is a spirit. He's not in flesh. This flesh gets tired. And we need that Sabbath, which we turned into a day of worship. But it's corporate worship, the intent. But the Sabbath was for us to rest from labor. But there is another rest of God that we're going to talk about tonight. And, and this rest is... Is what Jesus spoke about uh, in St. Matthews 11, 28 through 13. So let's go to St. Matthews. Let's turn to St. Matthews. And we're going to look at the 11th chapter. And we're going to read these verses. And then we're going to go talk. We got to understand what this rest is. Jesus said, he gives us this statement, this instructions. He gives it to his apostles as he, he he's moving towards Calvary. And we have to understand what is he talking about. Everybody turn to St. Matthews, the 11th chapter and the 28th verse. St. Matthews, the 11th chapter. And we're going to look at the 28th through the 30th verse. So good to see you, Deacon S. Lake, Marlena Lanson. Amen. All you coming in. Thank God for your participation, Patricia Miller. St. Matthews, 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verse. I'm going to read these few bit verses, and here's what it says. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? Now, wait a minute. Is that relaxation and sleeping? That doesn't make uh, practical sense. So he must, be talk sisters, he must be talking about something else. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy burdened. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he says, he says, come to him, approach him. And his, his desire is that we would come to him. And in coming to him, we will receive rest from labor and heavy laden, heavy burdens, right? We, we, we carry burdens and, and all the burdens that we carry are not necessarily burdens that are, have been uh, allocated to us. Sometimes we carry burdens because of family, because of uh, friends. He says, come to him and he will give us rest from our work and from our burdens. He says, you shall find rest unto your soul. So, so we got to understand this rest. What is he talking about? This rest? Well, in order to understand the rest, we got to go first before we understand these few verses. What is this rest he's talking about? Uh, let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the first verse. So we can comprehend what is this rest that he's talking about? Is he talking about, you know, relaxing, being being still, be refreshing us? Or is he talking about something that is a revelation of what God really wants to do through Christ? 
You know, he came that we may have light. We talk often, uh, Pastor Weston, about he died for our sins. He died in our place. But he, all, he said in John 10 and 10 also that he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So let's see what, what, what Hebrews 4 and 1 says. Because Paul is giving us some instructions. And when we understand this rest of God, then we understand why Christ said what he said. All right. Hebrews 4, fourth chapter in the first verse. Here's what he says. Let us therefore fear. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. And of you should seem to any of you should seem to come short of it. Paul is giving uh, in this letter, and some people does not ascribe Hebrews to Paul, but in the, he book of, the, the, the book of Hebrews, he said what we ought to be concerned about is not being able to receive a promise, that God has given us a promise, and the promise is not under grace. The promise was given under the law. He says he wants us to enter into his rest. He says, any of you should seem to come short of it. God does not want us to come short of this rest that he gives us. Paul says that we fall short of reaching this rest. But God says that somebody got to enter into the rest. Let's go to verse number six. We're in, verse, we're in ch Hebrews chapter four. Let's look at this, verse number six. Seeing therefore it remaineth then, some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. So see, yeah, Christine, there's a rest of God. There's a place, a promise God made. The promise is that we should have rest, not relaxation and refreshing ourselves. But there is a promise, a rest of God. And he says that, that we ought to be a concern that we fall short of not reaching the rest of God. And then verse six says, saying therefore it remained that, that God, that promise God made, aren't you glad that he's a promise keeper, regardless of our actions, regardless of who he speaks to, and regardless of how we sometimes fall short of his glory, when God makes a promise, he has to keep it. So he says, Paul says, that there still remaineth a rest of God saying, therefore, it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached in a not in because of unbelief, that the rest of God can be aborted because of unbelief. We got to believe that there's a place in God where things that we, things that we, that occur in our life, what Jesus called labor and heavy burdens, right? That even though we have this work to do and this heavy burden that we find rest in that, that we're not afflicted and we're not, uh, as we've taught many times, you may have trouble, but the trouble is not in you. And when we enter into this rest of God, it positions us to be in a place where God really wants us to be. The world is falling because of Adam and Eve, because Satan, right? Because of principalities because of rulers uh, and, and, and because of rulers in, in high places. There are demonic forces that are in the world. There are wicked people. There are evil people. And there are people who don't know Christ who are, their intention is to do it their way and not God's way. And consequently, we find ourselves in a whole lot of trouble all the time. There's some happening all the time. It, it may not have entered into our neighborhood, but it's somewhere in the city. And if we're not if we're not cautious, we can find ourselves caught in the one of those situations. So Paul says that we fall short of reaching this rest because, but he says some must enter to the rest because the promise is still available. The promise is still, Michelle Turner, the promise of rest is still available. So, so God gave this promise to Israel, right? God's indictment of Israel is that they did not move from labor to rest because of their unbelief. God has promised rest, and we're going to understand what the word rest means.
but they could not enter into the rest of God because of unbelief. Now we we're still in Hebrews the fourth chapter, and we're gonna look, we're gonna read verse five through verse nine. All right, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day. Verse 9. There remaineth, therefore, a rest to the people of God. There is a rest. So Jesus, that's what it says, verse 8, had, if Jesus had given them rest, right, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day, right? He said, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. If there was another rest, he would have spoken of another day. But this rest has nothing to do with about a day. It has to do with a place in God. All right. So let's go a little bit deeper. So verse nine says that it was already, it's already, it remains a rest to the people of God, Pastor Wood, that it was already given, right? It was given in the Old Testament. And we're going to find out what this is, that God made a promise and that promise still exists for us. It was not just for the Israel, children of Israel, it's for us. Let's go to Exodus. Get ready, Pastor Wood. You, you, you know where we're going. So Exodus, the 17th chapter. Let's find out what happened. What, 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 what created the limitation on what God wanted to happen that God has afforded us and promised us that we would have this rest. All right. Exodus, the 17th chapter. And we're going to look at the third through the the seventh verse, three through seven, and I think once we get this the context of what happened, then we can understand what has been available to us, Sister Gail Crozier, and because once we understand the rest of God, if we believe, which is faith, faith, imuna, support God, steadfast support of God, then we all tonight can enter into this rest. All right, Hebrews, I mean, sorry, Exodus, the seventeenth chapter. Verses 3 through 7. All right. And I'm going to read it. Pastor Woods, I want you to get ready to come on in here. It says, y'all got Exodus 17 and 3? Facebook, see you coming in. Good to see you, Shadana. And the people thirsted there for water. The people were the children of Israel. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. So, so they, here they are at Rephidim. They, they, God has already demonstrated grace. He gave man in the wilderness. They said, what is man means? What is this? Some kind of wafer that, 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 that they had never experienced before. He had already given them quail and now they, they was at Rephidim and they were thirsty and they began to blame Moses, Moses. Did you lead us out here to die, right? Us and our children. Verse number four, says Ames. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. They were so upset about this water. The man who led them out of Egypt across the Red Sea, heading towards Canaan, they taking pit stops. They're ready to stone him, all right? Verse number five. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thou rod wherewith thou would thou smote the river, the Red Sea. Take in thy hand and go. Verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in horror, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel. 
and because they tempted the Lord. Oh my God. Saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. They, they traveling. Watch this, Tina Diaz. They travel. God feeds them. They've been traveling. Clothes ain't getting worn. They've been traveling. God does all these things that he didn't have to do. It's called grace. When God does things that he don't have to do, it's called grace. They, they, now, wait a minute. If God can open up the Red Sea for me, and God can take a pillar of fire and keep me lit at night so I don't get lost, and a pillar of cloud in the day so I won't get lost, and, and then get me to a place called Rephidim, and there is no water, I should have enough faith based upon what God has already shown me not to wear. Right. And, and I want to talk to some people that have been through enough stuff. You say, I've been through enough stuff. I've experienced enough things that, I, that, that God has demonstrated that he will give me grace. Then why am I now at a place dealing with something that I've never seen before and believe that he's not able? That's what they said. Verse number seven. Here it is. Let me read it again. And he called the name of the place Massah and remember because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the, the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Wait, what? You thirsty and need some water. And because the water ain't available to you immediately, here you are now saying, what's up, God? Ain't you here or not? Are you going to do what you're supposed to do or not? And so Moses says, wait a minute, we got to call this place Ma Masa and Meribah. Uh, why would God lead them? Sisters, why would God lead them to Rephidim and not provide water? That's the word. Why would God lead them to Rephidim? Because verse number one said, let's go to verse number one. It said, God, why, first of all, why y'all picking on Moses? Because all Moses was doing was taking direction from God. And verse number one said, God commanded Moses to lead them to Rephidim. Now, it, would, it goes without saying uh, that if God led them to Rephidim, he knew that they were thirsty. He knew there was no water in Rephidim. So why didn't they trust him? Let's go to verse number one, Pastor Wood. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord. They, the directions that Moses, Moses wasn't leading them. Moses was following God. God said, go to Rephidim. Most be going. It says, and pitched in Rephidim and there was no water for the people to, that's what I got to get your thoughts on it. Listen, God leads you to a place where there ain't no water. Why would he do that? Why would he lead us to a place where there is no water? Was it to test the people? Or was it to teach the people? That's the question. See, because a lot of times we think, oh, God trying to test me. God, God don't have to test you because God knows the end, the last day of your life. God knows the last breath we're going to take. So God don't have to test us. But God does want to teach us. So God will lead us to some things to find out so that we can learn how to what? Trust him. That, that's that's what it's all about. Pastor Wood, you got something to add to that? Yes. Uh, when we look at it, um, in, in the context that uh, Paul, whoever is writing in Hebrews said, he said before, he's using this as, as the way to say that this is what kept them out of going to Canaan. Mm -hmm. They didn't get to Canaan because of this specific thing. One little mess up and they they didn't believe God. They After all that God, as you said, after all that God had already done, they were concerned about the water and, and just mess with Moses and, and because he was the agent of God and not believing. And God said to Moses that it wasn't to 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 test, but it is to show them, as you said, to show them that God is able to do anything. God is able to supply all of their needs in spite of them not recognizing what God can do. 
God does things that are unrecognizable. Mm. The other thing I wanted to point out too is that when uh, Jesus was was well, when well, yeah, Jesus when Jesus was was talking to them about the, you know, I'm going back to the, the making to Paul. When Paul was talking to them about the place of rest, and nobody was going. He was saying. This is why they were going. And then the place of rest he was talking about at that time was Jerusalem. So they, that is the promised place of rest, the physical place of rest. So he, he had to start talking about the the spiritual rest yet. But he was talking about the physical place of rest. And the reason they didn't get there because they didn't believe. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing that's keeping them back from the spiritual one. That's the analogy he was trying to make. So, you know, when we look at it in context, so they understand he was using that Moses story of, of how they messed up in Israel, remembering that all those people died, they were there for 40 years. Mm. All, none of those people who complained about that water went to truth. None of them. Isn't that something? None of them, Pastor? Pastor what? None of them. None of them. It, mm, mm, mm. See, see, because sometimes we get scriptures and we take it out of context. Moses couldn't go to Canaan because he took God, he usurped God's glory. He, he, the first time God said, hit the rock. The second time God didn't tell him to hit the rock, he hit it anyway and said, I gotta, he had gotten tired of the stubbornness of the people. <laughs> he began to condemn them. God said, wait a minute. You, I didn't tell you to do that. You said something very profound. He said, one condition of unbelief because the unbelief was Quarreling, quarrel, quarrel, arguing with God. I was going to say the word call. I mean, they were, uh, is God here or not? <laughs> is he going to do it or not? Won't he do it? But he ain't done it yet. God, what's up with that? So not, not only did they want to kill Moses, they was, verse seven, there it is, is the Lord among us or not? We can transcribe that, uh, Christine, to, to modern day lingo, linguistic. Is he gonna do it or what? <laughs> we he, when we out here in this desert, right? Don't God know I got bills to pay? Don't don't God know? God already know that you got bills to pay. The question is, God is trying to show us that the grace that He has for us, right? That's the goodness, not because we're good, because He's good, that we should have trust. That even though I don't know how he's going to do it, Pastor Woods just said, we don't know how this, where this water coming from. We don't know how this, the, all we see is rock. Evidently, them is a place full of rocks. So God, God didn't lead him to a dried up pond, right? He, he led him to a rock quarry. And everybody know practically ain't no water coming out, no rocks. But God was trying to teach them that his grace, right? is able to solve problems if we trust him, if we have faith in him, all right? But because they rejected God's grace and doubted his protection, and because they act in unbelief, guess what? That's what Pastor Woods just said it. God stopped them from getting into the rest, which means they couldn't go to Canaan. That that would suggest, Pastor, we shouldn't be calling with God. It's okay, I think. I only asked the question a few months ago. Is it all right to question God? Of course. But you can't argue with God. Or you can't condemn God. Because they knew God, Moses was following God. Right? But then they're going to say, is God here or not? That, that now, That's a bold, that's some bold individuals. Right, uh, you know the 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 song will say your arms too short to box with God. That's a bold individual to say, "Is God here or not?" Right, and because of unbelief, but really unbelief wrapped into uh, Meribah. The word Meribah is quarreling. Right, so they were quarreling with God. They were condemning Moses, but they were blaming God. You you brought us out here in this rock quarry. And ain't nobody had never seen them. We've seen the Red Sea. We got that. We've seen manna fall from the sky. We don't know where it came from, but we've seen that. We've seen quails come by and we had meat. But we ain't never been in a situation 
where we seen water come out no rock. And that's what God does for us, Pastor Woods. He puts things in front of us that we ain't never seen before and expect us to believe just because we never seen it before doesn't mean he can't do it. Because we have not, never been through it before does not mean that he's not able to get us through it. So they rejected God. They argued with God. The uh, Melsa means they tested God. Are you here or not? <laughs> if you here, do something, right? All right. So, so God said to that generation of Israelites, you will not enter into his rest. See, Pastor Wood, it's bigger than Canaan. So you can be in Canaan and still have problems and issues and struggles. It's bigger than Jerusalem. It's bigger than that. It's, it's, that's the physical rest. Cause y'all don't, we've been walking for 40 years. We've been <laughs> walking, walking, walking. Matter of fact, we've been walking in circles. That's, but God is, is trying to take us into a, a rest that's bigger than physical rest. All right. So he said unto them, they would not enter into his rest because they quarreled with God and they tested God. Let's go to Psalms 95, 6. Psalms 95, 6 through 11. This is where God explains himself. Psalms 95. We're going to get we're going to get to this rest in a minute, but we got to set the backdrop for this so you can understand this rest of God. They could not get into the rest of God. They're going to say, like Marlena Lassen, because they said, that, say, is God here or what? Is God going to do this or what? And, and you say, well, I would never talk to God like that. No, you would never say that. But sometimes our thought is, is God going to show up? God, God, when are you coming, God? We should never have that type of attitude. Because he's there's a song I think Todd Trippett said, he's done, he's done it before. He'll do it again. Just because he hadn't done it for me doesn't mean that he hasn't done it from somebody, for somebody else. Paul said, we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. All I need to do is look around and see people that God has, that the doctor prescribed to, to die, but they came out the ICU on it. Right? I've seen people prescribed with, with fatal diseases, but God has healed them. There's a point in time we are going to die, but there's times when God says, this is to teach you, teach us that he can do anything. Psalms 95, 6 through 11. Let's see what, let's see what happened here. We're going, we, we got to, we got to set the background here. Here we go. Oh, come. You know, verse one is good. It says, oh, I'm not going to go to verse one. You're going to read verse one through verse six, five at your leisure. But let's go to verse number six, Psalms 95, verse six. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Verse two, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, hard not your heart, as in the day in the provocation. They provoked God. They quarreled with God. They tested God. As in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers, this God talking, tempted me proved me and saw my work. 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it's a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. In other words, while God was doing all of this, these miracles because of his grace, Sister Gail Crozier, they paid no attention. <laughs> you walking across drop, it's one thing to walk across the Red Sea. God sent an east wind, ten of days, and opened up the water. But the ground was dry. You can try to explain about the river, the, the sea opening up. Can you explain how the ground is dry? You saw that. You saw the pillar cloud. You saw, but he said because their heart was hard, right? They refused to submit to God. Here's what he said, verse 11. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, they made God angry. He said, they shall not, they should not enter into my rest. There it is right there. Because they provoked God. They challenged God. They tested God. Are you going to give us some water or not? Are you going to give me the miracle I need to see or not? 
Are you going to bless me or not? And God got angry and said that this group of people will not enter into the rest. Pastor Wood, not Canaan, because that's where they were headed. He said, when you get to Canaan, you have an opportunity of rest. All right. So they missed the opportunity to receive the grace of God because of unbelief, even though God had already proven. And it shows us that God is serious about who he is and serious about what he expects. Wouldn't it be a shame to miss the grace of God because we just don't believe he'll do it? The Bible said the heavens declare the glory of God. God is not trying to prove that he's God. You, you, you can practically look around and see stuff that makes no sense to us, right? But yet we have to believe that he did it. And if he did all of that, is there anything, Sister Ings, that he won't do? He'll do it. He can do what? Everything. And what he all he requires is not hard. Just believe. Yeah. He, he, he believe. We have we have a role to play. But just believe. Believe what? He can do anything. Well, if he can do anything, then he he's not coming on our calendar. He's not working by our stopwatch. He shows up. Everything he does is perfect. He could have made the whole universe. In the whole world in one day could have spoken, but it took six because everything is perfectly tuned. You can set your watch. The, 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 the earth rotates around the sun so perfectly that man can predict when daylight going to come. That's how perfect it is. If they say 726 daylight, you can set there your alarm at 726 and see the sun. That's how everything is perfect, but they couldn't believe. Let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Because we got to get this rest, Pastor Woods. Because see, you said it, and let me touch and agree with you. We walk around in unbelief. Yeah. Uh, God said because the heart was hard. In other words, they refused to submit. We talked a little bit of, in our sermon on, on Sunday. We don't have no problem with obedience. We got a problem with surrendering. Obedience means this. I obey you as long as I agree with you. <laughs> That's what it means. I'm going to obey you. Will you obey me? Yes, I will. Until I disagree with you. Surrendering means I'm going to obey you even when I don't understand. I don't understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. It makes no sense to me. My idea is, my opinion is. So when you surrender, that means, okay, what? I don't understand it, but I have to trust, right? And that's what God expects. Hebrews 4 and 9. Let's go back to Hebrews 4 and 9. And let's see what the Lord has to say. Hebrews 4 and 9. There we go. Let's start right here. First Hebrews 4 and 9 says, There remaineth. That's good news, Sister Hooks. Brenda Hooks. That's a, isn't that good news? That God didn't let them get him so upset. That's why I said God, not John Paul. So I could have gotten so upset. I'm yanking all this rest away from everybody because all y'all the same. Everybody, generation after generation. God can look into the future and saw what's coming. He saw what's coming, uh, Nicole Tate. He looked, at, he can, he saw what's coming because he sent us here. And so I'm taking this. But Paul said, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. All right. So what is this rest God talking about? The word rest in Hebrew is nukah. Guess what it means? Quiet and tranquility. Oh my God. <laughs> we talked about peace. It means, wait a minute, but I'm surrounded by trouble. God said, you can be surrounded by trouble, but guess what? Have quiet, be quiet and have tranquility. Mm. The rest of God is not, watch this, Christine, is not rest from work. The rest he's talking about in Hebrews 4 and 9 is not rest from work, it, but rather rest in work. I want you to put that down. It's not rest from work. It's still got to work, but it's rest in the work, right? Jesus says burdens become lighter. Why? Because there's rest in the work, right? No, there ain't no stress. In this rest. See, if you're stressing and running around and find yourself running around all over the place, that is not, we're not in the rest of God. Sister Michelle Turner, when we are in the rest of God, we still have to work. But there's rest in the work. What does rest mean? It means quietness and tranquility. 
peace and tranquility. Yeah, everything falling apart, but it ain't bothering me. <laughs> everything is really going crazy, but it ain't bothering me. Why? Because when you enter in the rest of God, God put the rest in the work. When the burdens are heavy, God put the rest in the work. See, we never seen him turn, get, bring water out of a rock, but I believe he can do anything. So even though I've never seen him get me out of this, I just believe that he'll do it. If I do the work, he's going to bring tranquility in my burdens. He's going to bring tranquility in my, in my work. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and 3. Let's see what God has to say through Isaiah. Yeah, rest is not rest from work, not Sunday I'm going to go to church and I'm just going to come me home and ain't nothing wrong with resting like that physically. I'm going to go home, I'm going to eat and I'm going to lay out. Don't nobody answer the phone, don't nobody call me, don't nobody bother me, don't Facebook me, don't text me, don't do nothing because that's my Sunday, it's my rest day. That ain't the rest he's talking about. I don't know about y'all, I'll come home and rest and then wake up Monday morning still tired. So it can't be that rest. He's talking about rest in the work. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. And we're going to look at the 14th chapter. 14th chapter. And we're going to look at the third verse. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Isaiah, everybody turn to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. And we're going to look at the third verse. This is the rest of God. Here we go. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Oh, my God. And from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In other words, the children of Israel were in captivity. God said, faith, this is what faith does for us. God gives us rest. We, we still in captivity, but guess what? We ain't got no sorrow. We have no fear, right? And guess what? The, what, the hard bondage that, they try, that the devil trying to do, it ain't working. Paul, uh, uh, Moses, the, when he was before delivering the children of Israel, the Bible says in the book of Exodus that the children of Israel began to multiply. And so what Pharaoh did was, listen to this, it takes straw to make brick. So he said, I'm getting ready to beat them down. Can I use that expression? I'm getting ready to beat them down. Well, I said, I'm getting ready to make them work so hard for them that they're going to stop having babies. That's what he said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put so much pressure on them. I'm going to put so much struggle on them that they will not produce babies. But guess what? Make the brick without straw. How do you make brick without straw? But here's what happened. Because at that point, the grace of God was working. They still multiplied. <laughs> he was killing them. The wives couldn't have babies, but they still was multiplying. Because why? Because when you enter into the rest of God, you don't rest from work, but you find rest in the work. What is that rest? Here we go. Isaiah 14, 3, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest, peace, and tranquility. Quant tranquility, Sister Gail Crozier, means calmness. You, have you met, you ought to know at least one person that you hang out with. No matter what goes on in their life, they always calm. You said, now, we all bouncing off the wall. We about to lose our mind. We going to call prayer all night. Prayer means, and they don't even come. And when we call them, they say, I'm not worried about that. The Lord going to make a way. You know why? Because they have entered into the rest of God. Because in the rest of God, the work is still taking place. But the calmness and the quietness that God gives us, he said, he said from sorrow, right? From fear and from hard bondage. So see, that's what he does. When we enter into this rest, he does not rest not rest from the work but he brings rest into the situation he brings quietness and calmness into the situation so that we are able to handle it right he, he doesn't work for us he helps us see 
People say, I know we said it, it sounds like good preaching, but we say, won't he do it? Well, what he will do is help us. <laughs> he won't do the work, but he'll help us, strengthen us to do the work. All right. How does he strengthen us to do the work? I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. How does he strengthen me? Here it is. Jesus said, I'll give you rest. The word rest, nuka, means quiet and calm. You will be quiet and calm when the sorrows come. You'll be quiet and calm when you lose things. You'll be quiet and calm, right? When fear comes, you'll be quiet and calm when they look like we're under bondage. Y'all still here? Stop, stop us if you got any questions. We trying to try to make sure you get it. It involves, here's what rest means. Not rest from the work, but rest in the work. It involves partnering with God, doing what he calls you to do by his grace and leaving the part you can't do into his hands. Rest in the work. We're going to partner with God. God, me and you going to do this. You're going to help me. I'm going to do my part in the part I can't do. It's a part, Jerry Patton. We partnering with God. That's what faith is. I support you, right? The, like a football team, the tackle, if they fumble the ball, will try to run with it, but he's not a running back. His job is to block, right? His job is to block. Pulling God's job is to block, right? So I'm going to support the quarterback and the running back. I'm going to block to get make the hole for them so they, they can run the ball. They still have to run the ball. But the tackle's job is to make the hole. That's what God, that's a simple analogy. God makes the hole, but you got to run the ball. If you're waiting on God to do it, right, he's able to do anything. But what he wants us to do is learn how to trust him. Right? The running back trusts the tackle. You know why? Because the hole's supposed to be there. His job is to head in that direction. He assumes because he trusts his player that when he takes that seventh step and hit the front line, that the hole is there. Now, sometimes the hole ain't there. But his, his, he said, I trust him. I'm going to run in that direction because he's going to make that hole for me. But I got to run the ball. That's what God does. He, he makes a way. But he said, Moses, I'm going to stand up on horror. But you got to hit the rock. God did. God could have just made water come out the rock, but God requires us to partner with him. Tina Diaz, you got to partner with God. You got to partner with him. You find peace and tranquility when we pass the wood. We got to partner with him, right? If we, we don't sit on the sideline and, 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 and don't fight the battle. But I thought he said stand still. He did say stand still when the devil's shooting at you. But he also said, when your husband was going out to fight, he said, put your arm on, put all your equipment on. <laughs> put everything on and go out to battle. God could have, God could have said, y'all stay at home, I got this one. And spoke and, 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 and a noise from God could have caused confusion. Uh, uh, we getting ready to go take Jericho? Yeah, you're going to walk around that wall. What? Won't God, can't God breathe and knock the wall down? Yes, he can. But what you got to do? March and be quiet. So partnering with God, all right? This mindset, trusting him to accomplish it while having what? No doubt. This mindset creates peace and tranquility. Yeah. No sorrow, no fear, while even in bondage. Let's go to Joshua's 21. You got anything to add, Pastor, Pastor Wood? Pastor West, and you can. Huh? Uh, the, the verses right here are an invitation. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where Jesus is inviting to, to a place of rest. Mm -hmm. We look at what had happened before this, you know, why he is actually even saying that there's no rest. He's addressing all of the pressure that they have now, even though they're not in bondage, they still have oppression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always going to be trouble, Pastor Wood. If it ain't my trouble, it's somebody's trouble that I'm connected to. 
Someone asked me one time, well, Bishop Paul, when is it going to stop? I said, as long as there's a devil, do you believe it's going to stop? And, and everything ain't the devil. Sometimes it's just people, right? As long as there are people with their own wills and minds and mindsets and what they believe that they want to do, and, and some people prefer to take and not give, and some people take prefer to steal and not work. As long as all this world is like this, there's always going to be something. But God says he gives us that he, if we enter into his rest by faith, by belief, then those things should not disquiet us, stress us. And the reason why it stress us is because we got to work on turning the volume up on our belief. We got to believe God. It's easy to say it in church because we condition people to say things, right? It's like everybody touch your neighbor and say, I believe God. Everybody touching their neighbor and saying, I believe God. But when you leave the church and you're on your way down to Starbucks to get your, my favorite caramel crunch, vente side, and the phone ring, it ain't nothing but disaster on the end of that phone. What do you do? Some people just fall completely apart. But when you when you believe that God, all things work together for the good to them that love God, if I love God, that means God is up to something. Either God wants me to learn something, right? Or this is God's will and everything give what? Thanks. Because this is the will of God concerning what? You. And his will is not to hurt us. Let's go to Joshua 21 and 44. Can, can you read that, Pastor Pastor Wood? Joshua 21 and 44. Let's see what, 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 he, what he's talking about, about this, this rest of him, this, this belief, this, this trust. Trust means rely upon him. Faith means I support him. Whatever he's doing, I support it because he's trying to teach me something. He's trying to get me somewhere. And where he's trying to get me is to grow to a place where I'm in this rest. Pastor Wood, you got, uh, all right. Could you read the 44th and 45th verse? And the Lord gave them rest roundabout, mm. according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. They there failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. We need to put that, highlight that in your Bible. Get a, get somebody to write it out and put it on your refrigerator. Print it out and look at it every day. He says, when when he gave them rest, when they entered into his rest, right, we can talk about all the things he did for them, but here's what he says. There fell not any good thing that he promised. Everything he promised all came to pass. Okay. That means, Pastor Wood, do you know of anybody that can make a promise and everything they promise happen? No. No. We, we don't know anybody like that, right? No. No. But guess what? He says, when we no. enter to his rest, Kathy Wood, that everything he promised and we got 8,810 promises in this 66 books. Every one of them promises that he made in this book, all of it will come to pass in the book. If we just believe, right? Have belief, faith, have faith that even though I don't understand it, that he's going to do it. Guess what? We enter to a place of calmness and tranquility. Man, is that hard? It's hard if my heart is hard. And what he means by hard, hard means it don't mean I'm a bad person, Pastor Wood. A good person can have a hard heart. That means I have been conditioned by my life and what I've been through. <laughs> I've been through some stuff. And the stuff I've been through, I left it, but it's still with me. And when you get hurt more than once, right? Hurting don't feel good. So guess what? When I see hurt, well, I don't believe God helped me the last time. The reason why you're still here and we are still here sane is because he did. Yeah. The hurt was God allowed it so that we could what? Learn to trust him. That's, he got us out. He got us out of that. He got us away from that. He delivered us. Everything he said he would do. Lo, I'll be with you. 
No weapon formed against Sister Gail Crozier. No weapon formed against. Don't you know there's some people that wanted to take us out, wanted to destroy us, destroy our name, but guess what? God wouldn't let it happen. But we, we, but we get hard. Our hearts get hard because we get wounded. We get let down. We get disappointed. And so where we should believe, right, we put our faith in people. And God is saying you shouldn't put your faith in a person. Because even sometimes when somebody wants to help you, they have limited resources, right? They have limited ability. I could want to do it, but I just can't. I can promise you, I'm, I got you, Pastor Wood. I got you. And then God, something showed up and I was like, well, I intended to have you, but this thing is bigger than me. Yeah. How much you need? I got a few hundred. No, I need about 500,000. Guess what? Moonwalking out of here because we don't have that kind of money. But guess what? The earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof, everything in it is his. So he can come up with anything he needs to come. Touch the heart of a millionaire that don't even know you. Look at you on TV in a situation. Write a check, put it in the mail, and it shows up to your mailbox. That's God. When you're in that rest, he said, gave them rest from all this stuff. And everything he said, Pastor Wood, it all came to pass. Okay. That, that's all he wants us to, to do is believe, right? And when we believe, guess what? When God answers us, don't y'all, is there anybody other than me that been in a situation when God showed up and boy, all of a sudden that stretch like just disappeared? He's like, woof. <laughs> I can't wait to Sunday. I can't wait to Sunday so I can dance in the church. No, you need to be dancing at the moment that it happened because you're showing God it was you, God. It was you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't dance so much when I get to church. I, I'm wild. I ain't got no dance left. See? So he says, everything came to pass. Everything came to pass. What prevents us from entering to God's rest? Here we go. Rejecting God's grace. How? How do you, I need God's grace. No, I reject it. How do I un reject it? Unbelief. Not believing God's word. Not believing that God can do anything. But but I'm still in it. You know why you're still in it? Because you ain't believed yet. But I do I do believe. Well you well we do. But sometimes the one thing that God dislikes is doubt, says the Brenda Hinch. We God God does not like doubt. Doubt is the cousin to fear, right? Doubt is the cousin to fear. Doubt causes its cousin. When you we start doubting, it, doubt calls his cousin fear. And when fear comes, right? God cannot deal with us at all because God does not operate in fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, says Hilda Foster, but he gives us power, love, and a sound mind. All right? So, so doubt, they dis, they were, un, unbelief is simply not believing God's word. But I believe it, Pastor. Yes, but we also doubt. I worried about it. When you when you when we believe, we don't worry about it. Why don't we worry about it? Because we're in the rest of God. What's the rest of God? It's rest in the work. It's rest in the labor. So Jesus gives us specific instructions, Pastor Wood, on receiving this promise of rest and the benefits. Let's go back to St. Matthews. St. Matthews. New cut. Calm and quiet. Tranquility. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some people. Growing up, I mean, they went through some horrible stuff, right? But yet, how are you, how are you so calm? My grandmother, my great-grandmother had 13 kids, right? 13, 11, 11 of them died. How do you have 11 kids die and you just sitting there, when I came along, she's sitting there in, 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 in her living room just, with the, she loved to sing with the hymn book, saying, so how do you be calm and quiet when you don't went through that kind of tragedy? It's because when you enter into the rest of God, I believe that God does what's best. Even though I don't understand it. I believe that God can take this rock and make water come out this rock, even though I've never seen water come out of a rock. I believe that. And if you believe that, then peace and tranquility. Let's go to St. Matthew's. 11, 28, 
and 30. Let's go back to where we started. Let's see what Jesus is talking about. St. Matthew's 11th chapter. Is this hard? It shouldn't be. It's hard because we've just been through so much. That's the hard, hard. It's been through so much. When you've been enslaved and beat down and see people die around you and people be persecuted around you, it makes you hard. It makes you hard, mm -hmm. hard. You're not, a, you're, good, you're a good person, but our heart is hard only because we just, it's hard for me to believe because I've seen too much tragedy. But the tragedy must be explained because sometimes the tragedy happens to people we love who don't have faith. And sometimes God will let things happen to people so that we can complete our assignment in him. Let's go back to St. Matthew 11, 28. He says, come unto me. St. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me. Jesus invited people to approach him. Nothing stops us from coming to him with our labors and heavy burdens. Nothing. We can bring anything to God, Sister Crouch. Sometimes we don't bring things to God because we don't think we fit. We done done some stuff. And we believe that God is not going to hear us. Sometimes people like, you know, we know we we're not giving him our best. So sometimes we think God is holding things against us, but he doesn't. If we, if, he said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me, just like you are. We used to say in the church pastor would, just as you are. You know, and people people took that and got it out of context, meaning wear whatever you want to wear to church. It, it, it didn't mean that. It didn't mean, well, you know, come as you are. Come as you are, Christian Young. Ain't nothing got nothing to do with clothes. It's got to do with lifestyle. Yeah, you can be a drug dealer, drug addict, murderer, whatever. God said he's able to save. Come as you are means whatever condition we've been through, you can still come to him. Jesus said, come to him, right? There's no, there's no hostility. God has no enmity with us. In the Old Testament, Pastor Wood, when you sin, you died. Mm -hmm. if, if you stole something, you died. You know, them ink pens, we got, I got all these ink pens in my, in my bedroom drawer. You know those ink pens don't belong to you. <laughs> I'm not a thief. Don't call me a thief. What that drug ink pen would suggest. Ain't your, oh, that name on the side of the ink pen ain't your name. That's a company name. So if you took all the ink, ink pens, I can see you taking it from the job, but I can't understand why you didn't take it back to the work. That just made you a thief. He said, no, I'm not a thief like that bitch of Paul. I don't rob nobody's house. No, I just robbed the company. I'm robbing her. I take from the rich and give it to me. But the reality is, guess what? We can come. There's no hostility. There's no sin. There's only one sin that God don't accept that's blasphemy. Every other sin can be forgiven. Let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Come to him. Come to him just as we are. I talk to God. Be real with God. He already knows. God, I'm, 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 I'm at that place, God. But guess what? I, I'm going to believe you anyway. Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians, Pastor Wood, the second chapter. Ephesians second chapter. Pastor Weston spent uh, four months teaching on this. This Ephesians, if you get Ephesians, the whole gospel is written, wrapped up in the book of Ephesians. So y'all go to his YouTube page. Because he's he's taught the whole book. He's preached the whole book. And it'll be a blessing to you. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse number 13. All right, here we go. Pastor Wood, are you there? I am. All right, here we go. Now, go read it. You going to read it, Pastor Wood? I will. Thank you so much. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that 
that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That means we can go to God. We can go to the Father, just as we are. And guess what? He already know what we did. It doesn't matter. We can come to, the, Hebrews says, come to the throne of grace where we find, may find mercy and grace to help us in the time of need. Christ solved the problem about our previous lifestyle. What's previous lifestyle? What we did this morning. He solved the problem. There's, he said, when you come to Jesus, we find what, Pastor Wood? Peace. Peace. So Jesus said, what? Come unto me. So we get what? Peace. Without Jesus, there is no peace. I'm not talking about the Jesus of the church. I'm talking about Jesus in the Bible. Jesus in the Bible said peace. He said, I'll give you peace. Peace I leave with you. Did we, did we teach that last week for last, uh, that's the word. Isn't that amazing? It, it all ties together. It all ties together. He said, I'll give you peace. But we got to accept the peace. Accept that there's no enmity. The word enmity means God has no hostility towards us. Yeah, he don't want to hurt us. All he wants is good, right? That's grace. He wants what's good. Come unto me, right? Then he said, oh, let's go back to St. Matthew's 11th chapter. So we now know the reason for coming to Jesus. See, we, we dwell so much about Pastor Woods. We dwell so much that he died for our sins that we forget that he came for other reasons. He had to die as the second Adam. Yeah, he had to do that, but that's not why he came. He came that we may have life and have it more abundant. He came that we may have peace. Tina. He wants us to have peace. And when we come to him and accept him, then we're going to find peace. Because verse number, number uh, 28 says, All ye that what? Labor and are what? Heavy laden. What's labor and heavy laden? Life struggles. What's the struggles? Physical struggles, emotional struggles, spiritual struggles. It refers to those who try to do things on their own and fail. At some point, we got to give it up. At some point, we got to say, as the old churches say, turn it over to Jesus and he'll work it out. That song was good then. It sounded good, but it really was practical. If you turn it over to him, he'll work it out. We have a plot to play, but what does he give us, Pastor Wood? He gives us peace. All right? All ye that labor. All. I don't need to go translate that. All means all. All ye that labor. Whatever it is. Whatever the problem is. We cannot come to him unless we believe. He said, but if you believe and come to him, he'll give us rest. He's, that's the word, that's the word. Let me get over here. There we go. We've been talking about rest. Rest is what? Calmness and tranquility, peace, right? He said he'll give us peace if you come to him. There's another, I'm, I guess I'm in the old church movie. I call it old church. I don't know no other name to call it. My grandmama brought me up in the old church, right? Yeah, you know, uh, turn it over to Jesus and he'll work it out. All of the songs, am I the only one old up in there? So I see some people got some, you know, look like they got some great in some places. So I know you know what I'm talking about. He'll work it out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I wonder how my grandmother grew up in de in desegregation and in, in, uh, in segregation where black people couldn't ride on the front of the bus, couldn't go in the restaurants, could had to use the the, the toilet set. Colored people and uh, and oh by the way they were never clean. And 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 be bit me little and minimized, but yet she's sitting on the couch, just sitting there singing hymns, just like the world is great and we living good, right? We living good. When when the first television came out, Pastor Pastor Wood, everybody in the neighborhood went to one house. They were just sitting there, just as calm and like everything. Y'all don't know nothing about that kind of stuff, but guess what? Maybe because they did turn it over to Jesus, right? Maybe because he did give them rest. Maybe because they were in a hostile environment, but he gave them rest from the labor. I will give you rest. Right here, Bishop. Yes. I, 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 I 
I'm speaking about Jesus and being in that environment. And as he's speaking to them, when he says, come unto me, he's telling them, you know, because those that are surrounding him are the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and of course the regular people. And, then, and they've just been discussing all of the laws of Moses. Mm -hmm. And then he's thinking about how the people are oppressed by the laws of Moses. So he's saying, don't go to Moses, come to me. Yes. It's an imitation from being under the law to now being into grace. Yes. You, would, you go to Moses because of what the word says, all those laws are there. You come into me in faith. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, so it's an invitation for them to, to lighten this burden. The burden that is there is the burden of, you know, they, they called them then the yoke was uh, the law itself. Mm -hmm. That's what they called the, 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 the law. The law of Moses was called the yoke. Mm -hmm. and, and so he's telling them, and we, I know we didn't get to that yet, but, but that's what he's telling them. If you, if you want to get away from all that, if you want to get away from that labor, Labor is what they chose, but the heavy laden says that's what people are piling on you. It's not what you chose, but what's been chosen for you. Mm -hmm. and if you want to get away from all of that, then I can make that change for you. That's but good. Nobody can do it but I. Because he said, Come unto me, and I will. I will. Do not the law, not anybody else, just him. Mm, that's good, Pastor Wood. Yeah, so we get caught up into circumstance and situation that's been legislated by men. And it brings burdens, right? We were part of organizations or groups of people and they create burdens on us. Out of necessity, we participate or out of desire. But he says that way brings burdens. If we come to him, then we get rest. We get calmness and peace. Do it his way. Because he said what? Learn of me, right? Learn of me. Learn of me means do it. Do, use him as the example. Huh? Yes. Because th he's teaching differently from what, what the Pharisees are. Yes. He said, you had to learn all of those laws that Moses has. But if you come to me, you got to learn what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Talking about that yoke, that yoke for Moses them was, was the yoke of the law that's written. And mm -hmm. He's saying, my yoke is different. So so when you come to learn to me, then you're going to have to put on a different yoke. Mm -hmm. So so the question, Pastor. Go ahead, Pastor Wood. So, 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 the, so the question is, how do we learn of him? You know, I know the gospels, the gospel is not merely written so that we can believe that he's the son of God, that the gospel is written so we can be the example that we are the sons of God. Jesus is our example. Did you, we learn by, you learn by reading, but you also learn by seeing. We see what he did. We see the, the, the grace God gave him. We see all of those things happen. So he said, learn to do what I do. Learn of me. Learn his, his, he's the example. He is the perfect example. He is the second Adam. We have to learn not just to read the word and know the word, but see what he did. See, some people live a very rigid lifestyle. I've told a, a friend of mine, he said, yeah, I'm just trying to get it right. He don't go nowhere. I said, but Jesus went to parties. See, so therefore, guess what? Is that, when, are we going to be, oh, I don't, I, don't go, I don't go to basketball games. I don't, I said, why not? He said, because that, that right there is worldly. I said, well, who said that? Did you, but see, we didn't like, he, he's so, he's, we can be so busy trying to get the law right, right, that we don't learn from what Christ did. He went to a wedding feast, first miracles, turning water into wine, right? That means they were selling, they were serving wine at the wedding there, uh, Pastor Wood, right? Yeah. So, some people are like, oh, I'm not going there because they got wine up in there. Well, you don't have to drink it because it's there. But he said, learn of me. Be, use him as the example. Because his, his what? You, here we go, Pastor Woods. This is where you were going. Because his yoke is what? And his burdens are what? Are light. Following Jesus isn't heavy or causes pain or sorrow. Following Jesus does not cause sorrow. Following Jesus' example does not call pain. Let's get the last scripture, 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John. 1 John 5 and 3. What does he say? Well, since I've been 
doing it. Christ's way has been hard for me. Then are you are we really sure that we're doing it his way? Because five first John five and three says it shouldn't be that way. First John five and three. First John, right before Revelation. First John five and three. Here we go. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's it. He said, if we do it God's way, God's way does not require severe pain or sorrow. That's grievous mean. Grievous means severe pain or sorrow. He said his commandments are not, doesn't create severe pain or sorrow. The reason why we experience on occasions severe pain and sorrow is because we do it our way. There's a way that seems right under man. And when we do it our way, it will always end up with sorrow and pain. But if we do it God's way, that's what he just said. Well, Pastor, Pastor Wood, you see 1 John 5 and 3? Yes, sir. Yeah, read, that, read, that, read it again. We're getting ready to go. But I want you to read it because we, 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 sometimes we believe that the suffering that we're going through is because we're doing it for God's sake. But, but, but he didn't say that. Read 1 John 5 and 3, Pastor Wood. Commandments are not grievous. What does that mean to you, Pastor Wood? If, if you love God, you, the, way, the way you show Him is by keeping the commandments. Uh -huh. And the commandments won't do you any harm. No harm. Not at all. They're not, no not grievous. I mean, there's no grief attached to the commandment. There's no grief. So, 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 Pastor Wood, that means that by if I'm doing something in the ministry and I'm having pain, maybe it's because I'm not doing it his way. Because he just told me, he just told me that God loves us so much that we do what he says, there ain't no pain attached to it. So whenever I'm afflicted with pain and sorrow, maybe I need to step back and say, wait a minute. First John 5 and 3 said it ain't grievous. So if my pain and sorrow has to be because I'm doing it my way. And it can't be doing it God's way. Because God said his commandments don't create no grief. It creates what? Rest. What's rest? Rest. Says Girl, I know you got this. Rest is calm and calmness and quiet. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in the work. I'm in the fight. I'm in the, all this is going on. But guess what? I'm calm and I'm quiet. Sleeping good every night. The other thing about rest too is that the rest is it's when you put your burdens in God's hands. Yes. And enjoy his provisions for forgiveness and eternal life. That's that's the ultimate rest that we're looking for. That that that's the rest that is gonna happen for us. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying you, you're gonna have this physical rest now, and you're gonna have the assurance that I'm coming. But that real rest is going to be when you get to eternal life. Yeah, but he, but he's also talking about rest here. Yeah, my grandma, my grandma with them. Yeah, yeah, I, I, he said, "Come unto me, come to me now, and I'll give you rest." Now, my grandma, one of the things that I I recognize and it took Dr. Martin Luther King to prove the point is that though that that generation of black people didn't have to go through that, but God had to send Dr. King. To, to show those who are walking in fear, right, that God's word is, they would say, well, he died. Well, yeah, he did. Everybody's going to die one way or another. And there ain't no age, uh, there's no age uh, associated with death. Some people die young, some people die old. But if we, if we do the commandments of Christ and learn of Christ, do it his way, then that rest is available. He's, Hebrews said, there remaineth the rest. And he wants us to what? Enter in. When? Now. There is glory in heaven that's later. But God don't intend for us to live in hell down here. What kind of God is that? No. That would let us go through hell so we can wait to stand in front of judgment and he say, well, I don't know you. Wouldn't that, <laughs> wouldn't that be, what would you do if you just labored and went through hell and got beat up and bounced off the wall? Okay, I'm, I can't, close our eyes, get escorted to the throne of God and he said, who are you? <laughs> who are you? 
So it could not mean that all of this rest is in heaven. It means what? It's here on the planet. And that we're going to have these things that occur, but the requirements of God, his yoke is easy. Yoke is when they put two cows together and put a yoke on them so they pull together. He's not saying he, he's going to do it. He's I'm going to pull with you. Jesus said, I'm going to be with you going through this. It ain't give it to me and I handle it. It is he's with us. He's with us going with to, with us through it. And therefore, we we're, the load is the yoke is easy when he's helping us to carry it. It's just like moving a piece of furniture. When you try to get that furniture out the door by yourself, take all day. We let two or three people come and grab an end. You walk straight through the front door, right? You, that, their job is to help you carry that furniture. You can't sit down and say carry the furniture out because then they're going to sit down too. So Christ is saying if you learn of him, do it his way, then he's going to yoke up with us. He's going to yoke up. He said my yoke. He's going to yoke up with us because his yoke, his yoke is easy. What he's carrying, he makes it easy. And his burdens are what? Light. It's easy. Why the light? Because he's helping us. He ain't doing it for us. That's our problem in the black church. Can't speak for any other church. I've been associated with for all my life. Is that we waiting on him. And guess what? That's why we're in the condition we're in. In some cases. But when we yoke up with him, he makes the yoke what? Easy. Because why? He's carrying the weight with us. And the, the burden becomes what? Light. Why? Because we got peace. We got rest. We got we calm. That makes sense, everybody. So that, that there remains a rest of God. And it's a choice. The choice really is tonight. And, and many of you, hopefully everybody in here have entered into that rest. But if you have not entered into the rest, you feel stressed out, you feel like this, I just know what? God, Jesus can come right now as far as I'm concerned because I'm ready to depart this place because it's just all the news and all the wars and all that stuff, which is not in your backyard. We worry about, he said, we should not be in those, we're not in those places, so we should be in a place of rest, of calmness. When we when we trust God, sure, Master, when we trust and believe and come to Jesus and ask for help, and he helps us, then the burdens get light, and the yoke is easy because he's yoked up with us. That's rest. He helps us. To carry the load. He don't carry the load for it. God said, you, Moses, watch this Pastor Wood. God said, I'm going to be on top of the mountain. But Moses, you get your rod and you go to the rock. I'm, you hit the rock. God could have spoke from the mountain, water come out the rock. But then, then, then guess what? They would depend on God for what? Everything. No, you go over there and hit that rock. And teach them that when they want something to happen from God, as long as God is involved, it'll happen. And that's why some people he, he elevate and elevate and elevate and God promote them. And some people stay the same because they still depend upon God to do it all. And he never promised that. That's not rest. No. He rested on the seventh day. He, he rested from his work. Now he wants to work through us. Not for us. Right? Moses, God opened the Red Sea. Who gonna walk? Who gonna walk across that Red Sea? You are. Jordan River, gotta cross it. Who gonna open the Red? Who gonna open the Jordan River? God is. Who gotta cross that muddy water? You do. God said, uh, you shout and the wall come down. Did, did God shout? No, he did. Who had to shout? They did. Who had to walk? They did. But God you took their voice. Turned the volume up on their voice. And the volume of their voice threw the walls down. That's when you're in the rest, in the, in the rest of God. All right? We better close this 725. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any comment? It's available. Right now, Pastor Will, he said, there remaineth a what? A rest of God. It is available. It is available. Where? Sister Brenda Hinch. It's available now. How do I get it? Believe God. Believe that he's going to what? Help me. I got to work. But he gets in the work and helps. Jesus gets, Jesus said, you yoke up with me. And your yoke is going to become easy and your burden become light. All right?
I hope this was a blessing to y'all tonight. Y'all didn't ask no questions and make make no comments, but I hope that you receive what Pastor Woods, the great points Pastor Wood made. And we're gonna conclude this Bible study. Amen. I got some oh, wait, we got some comments in the chat here. Okay. Somebody had to leave. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Also, someone says this reminds them of the dimensions of faith that ties. That's right. That it's all about what you believe. All things are possible to them that what? Believe. Ain't nothing God won't do if you just believe that he'll help us to do it. All right, Pastor Woods. We're going to go ahead and close. Can you? Yeah. Pastor, thanks. This has been, truly been a blessing to me. I'm so full because this Bible study has really, really, truly helped me. <laughs> Praise God, Jacob. Praise God. That's well, That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We thank God because we're here because we it is God's will that if that's what he said, what we've been teaching is God's will that our yokes are easy and burden light. That's where Christ came and he's 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 made himself available. But then he left us the Holy Spirit. Everybody got the Holy Spirit if you believe. And guess what? Burdens ought to be light. We ought to have a rest. Go to sleep tonight. Sleep real good because I believe God. Even if it looks like it's getting real bad, guess what? I believe that God, that God can get me out of it. He's going to help me to get through this. Yeah. Thank, thank God bless you. God bless you, Jackie. God bless you. Pastor Wood, can you, can you give us the closing prayer and the benediction? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God, for life, for health, and for strength. We thank you, God, for the word that has gone forth on this evening. God, we pray that everyone got an understanding. We pray, God, that we continue to have this thirst for knowledge and this zeal that, that we're exhibiting to you. And God, we know that you know our hearts. and You know what we want, what we need, and what we desire. We ask God that you continue to bless all the participants here, continue to grow this ministry, continue to give Bishop the wisdom and the knowledge that we might follow him as he follows Christ. And as we leave this study, let us not leave your presence. And we ask for all these blessings in the power and authority of court according to Christ Jesus. Now unto him that loved us and has washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests before God and his Father, unto him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Amen. Thank you all for coming. We pray that you have a wonderful evening, an amazing week. And if the Lord's will, we hope Amen. to see you next Tuesday. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise yes, the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We don't have Sandra here to give us the final benediction. We praying for her. She had surgery today. And we know that it went well. So we, we're looking forward to seeing her real soon. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. There she is. Wait a minute. Sam, is that you? <laughs> Sandra, that's you right there. Look at her. You, you, you had certain. God, yes. God is healing me right now in the name of Jesus. There you go. God, Jesus. That's a witness right there. Love we love you too, Sandra. And to God be the good. Thank you so much, Sandra. We appreciate you, Sandra. Hey, Amen. Hey, Sandra's a witness. A lot of people wouldn't be, they'd be, if they were in the hospital, they would not dare get on the Zoom. But she's right here tonight in the hospital on Zoom, believing God. And he guessed what he's doing. Yeah, that's, thank you so much. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. <laughs>